G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. Time for another MDF painting tutorial. This time I'm painting up a very simple building in a Middle Eastern or a Mediterranean style scheme. Uh, it could have been loads better if uh, I spent a little bit of extra effort on uh, my sort of pre-paint steps. But, you know, we'll talk about some of those as we get into it. All right, let's jump into this and have a look. So I'm working on three models here for a little set that I'm, I'm doing. And the first step is to use some of this granite effect from Dulux, as I do in, on many, many of these, you know, undetailed Tabula Rasa buildings, just giving us something to work with and a little bit of texture to help come through later on. As always, a flat black spray. This time I'm using Squirts, their paint and prime. This is a very nice paint and I do like it. Um, again, we get this from Bunnings here in Australia. Uh, I'm, I am working on three different models uh, during this process, but I think I end up switching to one. Um, you know, it's lovely to have a hairdryer on hand. It just makes things a lot quicker and a lot simpler. Um, Inca Brown, this time from uh, MTN94, from Man Montana's uh, range of paints, their MTN94 paints. I'm not painting the inside of these buildings, but I do go ahead and spray some of the sections that you'll see when you're looking up underneath the model. For example, that balcony uh, area. A light dust with Stardust Grey. Again, as you can see in many of the tut tutorials that I've done, we're just dusting, just putting on, you know, progressive uh, layers of paint and allowing other layers to show through. So we're getting that uh, tonal variation happening. I love these stains. This is uh, these are from Cabots. They're a water-based uh, in uh, interior uh, stain for uh, wood. Um, and I just brush it on with an old brush and then using some tissue paper or my finger, you know, just spread and, you know, mop it around. You do get a little bit of time to work with this. Um, I do apply it neat and sometimes I use water. It just depends on, you know, what sort of effect that you want with this. Uh, it's quite a messy process, but it's good fun. You know, this is really where we start to see the model uh, in terms of its weathering come to life. And I, I'm using this same walnut for all the streaking and any grime um, and just work in small sections, spread it around. You can always mop it up with that tissue and apply more if you want to. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun step, it's a fun process. And uh, you know, it, it, it works very, very well. I really enjoy using these. The streaks, I just put a little bit at the top and then just drag it down with my finger and spread it out with a paintbrush and you know, it, it works very well. If you wanted, you know, um, a higher contrast, you know, use a smaller brush and you could actually paint directly on with this stuff. Neat. Uh, don't thin it down at all. And I, you know, I'm just going all around all the areas of the model where I think, you know, there, it would look good, where there should be grime, where there should be streaks, you know, coming down from the roof, underneath windows, uh, all that sort of business. It's a, a super fun step and I really enjoy it. Right, I wanted to do something about the roofs, so I cut up some strips of corrugated card. This is just uh, from the art supply store, about three centimeters thick. And uh, I went ahead and then cut them into six centimeter lengths. Um, yeah. <laughs> I had to quickly give my, you know, my cutting mat a clean. I couldn't see any of the lines on there, but I'm measuring out six centimeters there. And I cut them into six centimeter strips, like I just mentioned. Uh, I think I might uh, cut a few more of these and make them into a little pile sitting behind one of the buildings, like some sheets that they haven't used. Um, and now begins <laughs> the drama of putting these onto the roof. Now, um, it makes way more sense to go from bottom to top. So bottom, do all the way along the roof, then do the middle strip, then do the top strip. The way that I've done it here, you know, you'll see I end up having to peel the next or the middle row up so I can put that piece under. And it doesn't matter how many times I told myself not to do this. I keep on doing it. Now you can see here, now I'm going to do the next row. Whereas I should have finished, uh, you know, all the way across, across the bottom first, then done the middle, then done, done the top. Um, but it's just a matter of cutting out, uh, you know, your little areas to notch around that little roof uh, bit. It's not really a dormer, is it? Um, and, and gluing the card on. You know, quite a simple process. Uh, you know, it's not entirely realistic. I would prefer to have some actual corrugated material which can overlap properly. This has a flat back on the back of it. Right on to painting. I, I don't use any metallics on the roof. I use this color from uh, Dulux Tea House, and I just uh, uh, put blobs of paint onto the roof and then thin it with that water that you can see there just to help it flow. Obviously these house paints are quite thick. I just put blobs on and wet my brush and then brush it around. It makes it a lot easier to get that paint where I need it to be 
uh, without having to have too much paint on the roof. I don't let this dry, I go straight into the next colors, Burnt Sienna and Yellow Ochre. I basically uh, put daubs of this all over the building or all over the roof uh, uh, using the uh, Burnt Sienna. And then the Yellow Ochre, I put a, a little bit of that uh, orangey yellow in, uh, in that mix as well. And I grab a sponge and I, you know, tear a bit off and then I sponge it all around to blend it all in. And, you know, keeping in mind that the roof is still a little bit wet, that all of this is slowly, slowly, slowly blending together. Once this is done, I do go ahead and dry the roof with a hairdryer. I probably didn't dry it enough um, because when I'm applying, again, this walnut uh, decking stain, uh, to the model some of this gets out of shot here for a little bit while i'm you know working on that uh, that dormer window i just doing my weathering on there before i get onto the roof uh, when i did end up applying this to the corrugated card it did blend a little bit and you know I, I, you can see i just put some dots on there and then with water just thin it out quite heavily into almost like a wash uh, while it's on the model and um and then uh, you know it, some of the colors did blend you know, I probably could have waited a little bit longer before I went ahead and put that decking stain on the roof. To help try and fix that up, I went back with some of that tea house and just dry brushed over the roof a little bit. Again, trying to, you know, just blend things together. And then I went back with some pure um, uh, yellow ochre and just put some dots around the place, a little bit of dry brushing, um, you know, putting some, you know, this is going on neat into the corners and, uh, you know, just to help, you know, highlight that rust. And I think it's come up really, really nicely. It's a very simple job. I probably spent all up maybe 40 minutes working on this model altogether, maybe 45. Um, you can see the joins there. Now, this is what I was talking about before, you know, applying some wood filler, some wood putty, just to fill those joins would have made this model look way better. Um, and, you know, we'll talk about that in another video later on. But overall, you know, I'm quite happy. It looks very, very nice. And it looks like it has been sitting in the middle of a village or out in a field for quite some time. So there we go. Nice, quick, simple little tutorial. Again, using uh, spray paints for most of our job. It makes it very, very quick and simple. Um, if you don't use spray paints, you know, would you like to see tutorials that I do with a brush? Would you like to see tutorials done with an airbrush? Let me know what you would like me to, uh, to show you. You know, like I said at the beginning, we've got over 400 different models in the range from Knights of Dice. I'd quite happily get back into doing some scratch builds. I've been collecting you know, boxes and boxes of recycling and I, you know, I really want to do some more scratch builds. So you guys let me know in the comments below what you would like to see from me this year. It doesn't need to be stuff from Knights of Dice rep. It doesn't need to be, you know, it can be anything, you know, I really just want to, you know, start, you know, engaging with that creative passion that uh, I've really been missing for so many years. So um, let me know what you guys want to see. I'd love to make it. I'll catch you soon. See ya.